welcome back to our IB Chemistry video series. This is the third and final video in IB Chemistry Topic 1, Stoichiometric Relationships. In this video, we will be looking at calculations surrounding masses, limiting reagents, volumes, concentrations, and yields. In our previous video, we discussed the formula mass divided by ram equals moles. During your IB course, you will commonly be using this to calculate the number of moles of a substance based off of a mass in a chemical equation. Let's look at an example. If 1.2 grams of copper reacts in the following equation, what mass of nitric acid would be required to completely react with the mass of copper? Before we begin, it is important to note that the coefficients in front of each of the constituents of this equation correlate to the ratio of the number of moles of each substance. So, here, for every 3 moles of copper, there are 8 moles of nitric acid. We can calculate the number of moles of copper as mass divided by ram. Then, by dividing this number by 3 and multiplying by 8, we get the number of moles of nitric acid. Then, we can calculate the mass of nitric acid as moles times ram, which is 3.17 grams. Finding the number of moles and masses of both reactants and products according to chemical equations is a core skill in the IB chemistry syllabus. You should definitely practice this. But what happens when you are given arbitrary masses of more than one reagent? In this situation, it is highly likely that one of the reagents will not completely react in the reaction. This is important, as whenever you do moles calculations, you must use the reagent that completely reacts. This is known as the limiting reagent. Let's explore how to find the limiting reagent using a question based on the same equation as earlier. If 2 grams of copper and 12 grams of nitric acid react in the following equation, which reagent will be the limiting reactant? To calculate the limiting reagent, simply find the number of moles of both reactants, and then divide this by their coefficients so that they are in a 1 to 1 ratio. Here we can see that we have a 1 to 1 ratio of 0 0.010 moles of copper to 0.024 moles of nitric acid, and therefore the copper is limiting, i.e. there is less of it. Once you have found the limiting reagent in this way, you must use the values of moles corresponding to that limiting reagent for all further calculations. You must always have this process in the back of your mind when doing moles calculations. However, if a question only gives you the mass or moles of a single reagent, you can safely assume that that is the limiting reagent. So how does this all relate to volume? Well, as mentioned in a previous video, there are two volume formula you need to be aware of. The first is volume equals moles times 24, and the second is volume equals moles times 22.7. Both of these equations give a value of volume in decimeters cubed. If a question indicates that a reaction is taking place at RTP, room temperature and pressure, which is 298 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere, you must use the left triangle. If the reaction is occurring at STP, which is 273 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere, you must use the right triangle. Let's take the same equation we used previously but this time the question states, calculate the volume in centimetres cubed of nitric oxide created when 3 grams of copper reacts at RTP. The question is only giving us a single reagent, so we can assume that the copper is limiting in this reaction. The moles of copper can be calculated using the formula mass divided by ram. This can then be divided by 3 and times by 2 to give the moles of nitric oxide. Given that the question stated this reaction occurred at RTP, we will then times its value by 24 to give the volume of nitric oxide in dm cubed. We can then multiply by 1000 to get the value in cm cubed. If the question had instead stated that the reaction occurred at STP, we would simply times the value of moles that we had by 22.7. The process is exactly the same. We have previously mentioned the two ideal gas equations that also relate to volume. PV equals NRT, 
and P1 times V1 over T1 equals P2 times V2 over T2. To explore these equations, let's look at two distinct examples. A 600 centimetre cubed sample of xenon gas has a pressure of 2.335 times 10 to the 4 pascals at 150 Kelvin. What pressure will it exert if the volume and temperature are increased to 0.8 dm cubed and 200 Kelvin? The equation to use here is P1 times V1 over T1 equals P2 times V2 over T2. Remember, in this equation, the units for pressure and volume do not matter as long as they are the same on both sides of the equation. However, temperature must be in Kelvin. After some rearranging, we can see the pressure will be 2.33 times 10 to the 4 pascals. Let's look at the second example. 0 0.673 grams of a substance has a volume of 272 centimetres cubed at 42 degrees Celsius and 103.4 kilopascals. What is its molar mass? The equation to use here is PV equals nRT. Remember, in this equation, not only must temperature be in Kelvin, but pressure must be in pascals and volume in meters cubed. So, after some rearranging, we can see the moles of the substance is 0 0.0107. Then, using the formula, ram equals mass divided by moles, we can find the RAM, which is 62.64. These equations are slightly more tricky than the simple moles and volume calculations, so you should practice them further on our question pages. Now that you have a basic understanding of how mass, RAM, moles and volumes relate to one another, we can have a look at concentration. The key formula you need to know was mentioned before. It is moles divided by volume is equal to concentration. Remember, volume must be in dm cubed to use this formula. Let's apply it in a question. 1.01 grams of potassium nitrate is dissolved in water to make 0.5 dm cubed of solution. What would be the concentration in mole per decimeters cubed? We start by calculating the moles of nitric oxide using mass divided by ram, then concentration equals moles divided by volume, which equals 0.02 moles per decimeters cubed. It is that easy. Let's now look at a slightly more advanced question. A sample of nitric acid of volume 20 centimeters cubed and concentration 0.4 mole per decimeter cubed is made into sodium nitrate. What volume in centimeters cubed of 0.2 mole per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide would be required? First, we start by writing a balanced equation and making sure to convert centimetres cubed to decimetres cubed. The moles of HNO3 would be 0 0.02 times 0 0.4, which is 0 0.008. Since nitric acid and sodium hydroxide react in a one-to-one -one ratio, the moles of sodium hydroxide is also 0 0.008. We can then find the volume in decimetres cubed as moles divided by concentration, which is 0.04. Converting this to centimetres cubed then gives 40 centimetres cubed. However, there is a neat equation that can make these questions easier. It is C1 times V1 over N1 equals C2 times V2 over N2. Here, C stands for concentration, V for volume, and n for the coefficient of each reagent. The key difference here is that the units for concentration and volume can be anything, as long as they are the same on both sides of the equation. So, after some rearranging, we can see the answer would be 40, much quicker. Let's move on to the final section of this video, yields. Throughout this video, we have been calculating what are called theoretical yields, i.e. Based purely on paper, the expected mass, volume, or concentration one would expect to obtain in a chemical reaction. However, the experimental yield is often far lower due to energy losses or human error that accompany all chemical reactions. In the IB chemistry syllabus, you can be asked to calculate the percentage yield, which is simply the difference between these two values. 
i.e. what percentage of the theoretical yield was actually obtained. It can be thought of akin to the efficiency of a reaction. The formula for percentage yield is experimental yield divided by theoretical yield multiplied by 100. Let's explore this formula through a question. When 65 grams of Fe2O3 was added as per the following equation, 38.5 grams of iron was obtained. Calculate the percentage yield for this reaction. The question has given us the experimental yield of 38.5 grams of iron. So, to calculate the percentage yield, we need to find the theoretical yield. This is exactly what we have covered in this video. Using our first triangle, we can find moles as mass divided by ram, which is 0 0.406. Given that Fe2O3 and Fe are in a 1 to 2 ratio, the moles of Fe is 0 0.8125. Reusing our triangle, we can then find the mass of iron as moles times ram, which is 45.5. Now that we have the theoretical yield, we can substitute this into our formula, which equals 84.6. We can therefore say that the percentage yield of this reaction was 84.6%. There are several different formats in which you can be asked these types of yield questions, so be sure to check them out on our question pages. We hope you enjoyed our third and final video in our IB Chemistry Topic 1 video series. With some practice, you'll be acing IB Chemistry Topic 1. Check out our notes, flashcards and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.